we are going to be taking a look at the volume of pyramids and cones. What is the volume? Use pi equals 3.14 and round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Okay, well, the first thing we need to do is identify our shape. I can see that my shape here is a cone. Right, it looks like a birthday hat or an upside down ice cream cone. And we know that its base is a circle. So I wanna start with my formula for volume of a cone. And my formula for volume of a cone is that V, my volume, is equal to one third pi r squared h. So taking a look at this, now notice pi r squared is our area of a circle formula. The base is a circle. So this is essentially saying a third the base times the height, which makes sense if our base is a circle. If it was straight up, we would multiply that by the height if we had, for example, a cylinder. But because it slants in, it's going to get smaller, which is why we have the one third in that formula. And then from here, I need to know that in this formula, R always stands for the radius of the base. And that H always stands for the height. And now I'm ready to plug my numbers in. So I'm gonna say the volume is equal to one third now they told us for pi to use 3.14. Now if I look at my diagram, remember the radius would be from the center of my circle to one edge. It looks like in this diagram they gave us the measurement from edge to edge, which would actually be the diameter. So in this case, if the diameter measures four millimeters, the radius is always exactly half the diameter. So that means the radius would have to be half of four or two millimeters. So I've got, and I'm gonna put parentheses around all of these, I'm multiplying everything together. One third times 3.14 times my radius squared, which is two squared, times the height. Now the height is always straight up from the center, and I can see on this diagram my height is six millimeters. Now, you do wanna think of order of operations before you plug everything into your calculator, because I've got multiplication, and I've also got an exponent. So if you think about order of operations, you do parentheses first, well, there's nothing to do inside the parentheses except for my one exponent. Then we do exponents, then we do multiplication or division, and then last, of course, we would do any addition or subtraction. So in this case, I just need to make sure that I'm doing two squared before I multiply all these numbers out. So two squared or two times two gives me four. And then from here, I'm gonna be multiplying all of these numbers together. So we can just take our calculator. And remember, multiplying by one third is the same thing as dividing by three. So if you prefer to multiply all the other numbers together and then divide it by three, another way to write the same thing would be to say, okay, I'm gonna multiply all my numbers together, 3.14 times four times six. And then either multiplying that whole thing by one third or another way to do that is to divide it by three. Okay, so let's multiply 3.14 times four times six. Okay, that's gonna give me 75.36. And then I still need to divide it by three. Okay, and when I divide it by three, I get 25.12. And 
Our answer is gonna be in millimeters cubed, which they did fill in for us already. But to take a second to look at why is our answer in cubed, well, one answer is because it's volume. So volume is gonna be in cubic units. The other answer is if you look at our algebra here, we have multiplied millimeters times millimeters times millimeters. We essentially multiplied millimeters by itself three times because, okay, the one third doesn't have any unit and neither does pi, but the radius was squared, right? So our radius was in millimeters. So when we squared it, we said millimeters times millimeters, and then we also multiplied by our height, which was in millimeters as well. So you can see when we multiplied millimeters by millimeters by millimeters, our answer is gonna be in millimeters cubed. So just a little background there so you can see where those units came from. Now it did tell us to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. Remember the hundredth would be two decimal places. The first one would be the tens place, the second would be the hundredths. Since my answer only went out to two places, I'm gonna leave it as 25.12 millimeters cubed. We have another cone, and again, they're asking us to find the volume and use pi equals 3.14 and rounding our answer to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so we're gonna use the same formula we used a moment ago, that volume of a cone is equal to, and again, you can either say one third pi r squared h, or you could say pi r squared h divided by three, right? Because multiplying by one third or dividing by three are the same. And I think it might be a little easier if we do it this way, pi r squared h divided by three. Okay, and of course, r is the radius and of our base and h is the height of our cone. So when we plug our numbers in, volume is equal to, well, they told us to use 3.14 approximation for pi. Next, I need to do my radius. Well, in my diagram, they showed us all the way across through the center, which would actually be the diameter is six. But remember, the radius is half of the diameter. So half of six is three, so the radius, meaning from the center just out to one edge, would be three kilometers. Since it's the radius squared, I'm gonna say three squared. And then we're multiplying that by the height, which is from the center up. So I can see that my height is seven kilometers. And then we're dividing by three. So when you're working with a formula whether it's for volume or area or anything like that, it's really about just carefully finding the information and plugging it in to the right variable or the right area of your formula. And then of course, we always wanna make sure we're following our order of operations. The first thing I need to do is my exponent. So I'm gonna leave everything else where it is, 3.14. I'm gonna square my three, right? Three squared means three times three, which gives me nine and everything else stays the same, times seven, and the entire thing is still divided by three. Now from here, I'm gonna multiply all three of those numbers together that are on the top of my formula. 3.14 times nine times seven. And that's gonna give me 197 0.82, and I still have to divide that whole thing by three. So now divide it by three, and I get 65.94. And of course, my units are gonna be kilometers cubed, which they've already filled in for me. Okay, so this is where you have to be really careful because it appears to be the same question. What is the volume round your answer to the nearest hundredth? But take a look at this and notice our diagram looks a little bit different. We do not have a cone here. We actually have a pyramid. Now, 
Now the formula is very similar. It's still gonna be one third the area of the base times the height, but the area of the base is not gonna be a circle. You have to look at the base and determine what shape it is and use the appropriate area formula for your base. So I'm gonna write my formula like this. Volume is equal to, and of course you could either multiply by one third or divide by three like we did before. Now I'm going to use capital B to show that it's the area of the base multiplied by the height divided by three. And I'm going to make us a little note here that capital B stands for the area of the base. That's why I'm not just using little b. Okay, so before I plug anything into my formula here, I want to look at my base, and I can see that the base is a triangle. So I want to set up my formula for area of a triangle, which is one half base times height. which in this case, they are both five. Right, those are the, the sides making up what appears to be our 90 degree angle in the diagram here. So five times five is 25, half of that gives me 12.5. So the area of my base is 12.5 square meters and I'm gonna plug that into my volume formula. So volume equals area of the base, which we already figured out was 12.5, times the height of our pyramid. Well, the height of our pyramid is five meters. And then we have to divide the entire thing by three. Okay, so let's multiply across the top first, 12.5 times five. That's gonna give me 62.5. and then I still have to divide it by three. Okay, and this time I got a long decimal again. It gives me an answer of 20.83 repeating. This little line over the three means the three keeps going. So if there's threes repeating after that, well, if I'm rounding it to two decimal places, I'm gonna say 20.8, and then I have to decide if that next digit of three stays the same or rounds up. Well, if the next digit were five or higher, I'd round it up to a four, but it's not. The next digit is three since it's repeating. So it's gonna stay as 20.83 meters cubed.